What's up, fantasy people? This is Tyler, Big Turd Ward, and Jason, the sick boy youth and Walt, coming at you live from the West Coast. And this is the Fantasy Footballing Show. Today's episode is, hey, beard time. I can't even open this thing. I got no, I don't have anything. There we go. Beard time breakdown. It's five o'clock somewhere. Jason, please tell the uh, public what time it is and how they can t- and how they could uh, help this ep- help this show. Oh yeah, they could uh, they could help this show by doing a little subscription, and then they could give us some likes. We get a lot of likes on the Instagram. All of our uh, shorts, all of our videos get a lot a lot more likes on Instagram than YouTube. YouTube, we need your help. Let's step it up. Let's do this, please. Also, you can leave some comments. Um, we love the interaction with you guys. And if you want to go check out more content on the on the Instagram, we're at the Fantasy Football and Show. You forgot to tell them what time in the morning it is, Jason. It is nine fifty six a.m. on the West Coast. Uh... I'm doing this for uh, content, Jason. I'm only, I don't, when, last time I drank like uh, this earlier, I was in college. Yeah, Tyler just graduated last week. They, uh, <laughs> I would be joining him with an early morning brew. I don't think my body could take it right now. I feel like I need to be in a bubble wrap. Uh, Jason was a bubble boy last night. He could not do the Friday night beer time breakdown, so we do apologize, but we got to look out for each other. Yeah, we are humans. We are humans. Or are we dancers? Or are we dancers? This is brought to you by Vapor Cool uh, Cough Drop. <laughs> I can't even get it focused. As I say, it might, it, once you get it focused, it might be. Um, these cough drops, they do help with a sore throat and the coughing. I do not think you go overdose on cough drops, so I take them all the time lately, so I can breathe. So, today's episode, our top 25 wide receivers for the next NFL fantasy football season. But we're just going kind of like, you know, this is like the non-analytic, just kind of like who would you trade for, you know, gut feeling type of like who would you rather have. We're going to deep, we're going to dive deep in the analytics in the offseason, which kind of is, but after the fantasy football playoff challenge. Uh, but this is just kind of like a, a rough draft of our, you know, top wide receivers for next year. And um, we're going to talk through them, probably split them into tiers because that's what it's really all about. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Um, there is one player, though, that will stand out that we are going to project for next year. And Jason, I'll talk to you about that. OK, it's, it's Calvin Ridley. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, I'm too, yeah, I'm too excited for uh, Trevor Lawrence with a you know number one wide receiver. So next year, dude, Calvin Ridley, we're gonna project him as uh you know being on the Jaguars with um with uh what's his name, dude? I can't even Trevor Lawrence, man. So Jason, yeah, who's the number one wide receiver? Justin Jefferson. Even with his uh, are you still comfortable with him even with his bad games? Yeah. You know, unfortunately, you can't really predict a lot of bad games, but he had so many great games. He led the league in receiving yards. His touchdowns, I don't even think he got up to 10. Um, Yeah, he only had eight, I think, only eight receiving touchdowns. But when you're getting 1,800 yards receiving and you're getting – uh, 128 receptions and 184 targets. It's pretty dang good. 184 targets, dude. What? That's 10.4 targets a game or something like that. So, oh, um, yeah, you know, unless until they uh the Vikings can, you know, not have to play from behind in most of their games and do this one score victories. Uh, Justin Jefferson is gonna be your guy. Gonna be your guy. Yeah, so it's he's entering his fourth season. Um, as far as young wide receiver goes, you know, like Cooper Cup is not young. Tyreek Hill is really not that young. And then um, A.J. Brown is young, you know. And uh, I forget who else was young on, on top of this list, but as far as youth goes, oh, Jamar Chase, he's young. 
So mm, I think that youth and uh, targets is what I'm going after. And, uh, you know, Kevin McConnell's still going to be there, and he made Cooper Cup. And as much as I don't like him in the run game, dude, they're going to pass so much. And I'm very interested to see if they're going to keep Kirk Cousins, but we're just going right now with, you know, as Kirk Cousins as their quarterback. So, I mean, if, if I, it's almost better for Justin Jefferson if Kirk Cousins is there as his quarterback because he's hyper-targeted. Yeah, as he so, should be. Yeah, yeah. And if it was kind of like a when he does have a bad game, especially towards the end, it was it was all the TJ Hawkinson big games. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. like last week where TJ put up uh, 10 receptions, like 128 yards. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, that was crazy. I mean, and what did Justin Jefferson get, like seven for 45 or something like that? Yeah. Um, anyways, so next up, Jason, I said his name. How do you feel about Cooper Cup next season? He's a question mark for me for this high. So would you rather have – because Matthew Stafford said he's going to be back. I'm pretty sure Sean McVay said he's going to be back. I'm not really sure. Sean did say he's going to be back. Okay, that's what I thought I heard. So with Sean McVay, I mean, you know what they need to do. They're going to trade everything they can to get offensive linemen before next season, um, which is smart, and that's what they need to do. But hey, man, Cooper Cup, I forget, was it, actually, he, it wasn't a high ankle sprain. He went from like a high ankle sprain, and then he injured it again, and that was like a MCL, or what was that? Uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure. I just know it was to the point where they didn't, they were already thinking about next year and they just shut him down. Like, I think he could have came back and played, but they were just like, nah. well, that's better, you know, for Cooper cup. So, mm-hmm. I mean, dude, in the beginning of the season, Cooper cup was the number one player by far. Like he was insane. So yeah. Mike is, have... Oh, what's up, Jason? Sorry. I was going to say Mike is certain is just Matthew Stafford's got another year. And Matthew Stafford was injured a lot last year, and their offense kind of sucked. Kind of sucked. Are they going? And you said it right. You know they're going to do whatever they can to uh, boost that offensive line. But the Rams are running out of real estate. They don't got a lot of property to give up anymore because they keep giving away things every year for players. So I don't know. Like I, Cooper Cup as number two. Like I, I guess I guess I would be okay. I would just be a little bit cautious with it, just because of the Rams organization right now and how they're just like, what the heck is going on over there? Cooper Cup is still a great player, right? He's probably the best route runner in the NFL right now. Um, sorry, dude. I'm just I'm so foggy in the head. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think a number two, number three would be fine. I would just – you got to be a little bit cautious with him. There's, I think there is a chance – he has a bigger chance to have a uh, really low floor for next year. So you have uh, – you know who my – Jason, you and I have been talking about this for – I've been paying – if you've been watching the show, you kind of understand. But we've been having um, Tyreek Hill over Jamar Chase all season and then over the last, like, third quarter of the season – kind of flipped we have jamar chase over tyreek hill so uh who would you rather have would you rather have jamar chase or cooper cup uh for me because what i try to do is pick players on winning teams i would have jamar chase yeah i mean he's in the he's in the more defensive uh division um but i mean you know like joe burrow is like he's gonna be a top three quarterback in the league for the next what 10 years so yeah if you can get in jamar chase is going into his third season so he's still like he's like a year younger than uh, jamar jefferson pretty much or justin jefferson sorry and uh that's funny the way i said that uh but yeah dude so i could see all this and this is probably getting this is probably could flip so i think that justin jefferson is actually in a tier of his own um, absolutely yeah, so that's why I mean, if I that's why I really value Justin Jefferson as the number one pick, uh, and I could see Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill maybe going through, but I really do like Jamar Chase. Like I, like everything that you just said about Jamar Chase, I could see him surpassing um, Cooper Cup. Yeah, unless that the Rams offense decide to blow up again, like they did their uh, Super Bowl year, which is what, would, we, saw, what yeah. we saw this year was very concerning. 
Yeah, well, we need to see some offseason moves for the Rams before we can yep. really have trust in Cooper Cup. But I'm just going off of like what we saw even in the beginning of the season with their terrible offensive line, dude. Like he he was catching 100 yards and touchdown a game. So, Ooh, yeah. So we have J- J- Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup, and Jamar Chase could be who knows what's going to happen there. But you have Jamar Chase over Cooper Cup. Jamar do Ty- Chase. Do you have Tyreek over uh, Cooper Cup? No. Okay, so you'd 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 rely on the consistency of uh, of that. Okay, uh, dude, I thought Tyreek Hill was like playing to be like the number one pick next year for like half the season, but then you saw, dude, how much they rely on um, Teddy Bridgewater and uh, Tua, which is, I mean, that's the quarterback. I mean, it's not bad to rely on a quarterback, but uh, those two, I mean, I should know as a Vikings fan, dude, Bridgewater is amazing, but to rely on him for more than a couple games, it's just not going to happen um, health wise. And then Tua, dude, if I was Tua's parents, I'd take him out of football. <laughs> I'd say, take your money, man. We're going back to, uh, yeah. we're going to go play the ukulele on the beach. Yeah. And never hurt, hit our head on anything again, other than a coconut falling from a tree. Maybe I don't even know. Or go surfing, bro. Dude, I would do that in a heartbeat and just take your money. Uh, but hey, uh, doing what you love. I mean, I'm sure he loves playing football, so you can't take that from somebody. But man, dude, it's just, it's so scary to deal with uh, all that. You know, the, anybody on the, um, like Waddle, dude, like where is Waddle? Because I was like, who knows if Tua is going to even be there next year? I'm assuming he's not, or they're going to draft somebody else. And Waddle's success hinges a lot on um, on uh, what's Tua throwing the ball. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, Jason. No, I think uh, Ty... With that being said, Tyreek Hill's talent is the reason why he is what was the number four, number five wide receiver. Where are we at? Yeah, we're at number four. So he's I I have him right below uh, uh, Jamar Chase. You have him right below Cooper Cup. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean Tyreek Hill. He was second in receiving yards this year. He does a lot of his um, yeah uh, yards like after the catch. Right, it's just those. Simple drag routes or um, slants. Slants all day, man. Yep, that Tua and Bridgewater could hit, but when you got these, you got like these whatever quarterbacks. When was that guy's like Thompson? That play Thompson, yeah, yeah. And you can't even throw the ball to. You can't even hit him on those slants. You have a whole different game plan when the, when like Tua's not uh, in the game. Well, say that. Uh, kill. What's he going to be next year? 29, 30? Yeah, I don't, I'm not afraid of his age that much because of his physical prowess. You know, he's tiny. He All he does is rely on speed. Like, I I really do like Tyreek Hill. I don't, he'd have to be like 32 for me to care. Yeah, he had some injuries this year. His weak ankles, man. His weak ankles. I forgot about that. You're right. Uh, and the one thing that would change this, like, completely is if Tom Brady went there or something like that some person that you can rely on to be there every game and can throw accurately. Like, yeah, Tyreek Hill would be like up in the same tier, but right now because of inconsistency in the quarterback situation, I kind of have him a tier below. Do you really, uh, you think there's a chance to, him might not be there next year? Yeah, dude, they can't. It's cause I think that to make a decision on whether to pay him or not. And so I'm pretty sure they're, they're, they're going to offer him something really low. And so he might get something from somebody else. Uh, all the football minds don't think that he's going to be there. So um, we'll see. Mm-hmm. It's so early in the season, uh, you know, because he's an awesome quarterback when he's when he's healthy. So, you know, it's easy to say they get rid of him. But uh, when it comes down to it, like I'm sure Mike McDaniels uh, wants to keep him or whatever. It's, it's Mike McDaniels, right? Yeah. I, uh, two is Mike McDaniels, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, that'd be tough to do. We'll have to see. And then – um. Jason, moving on, I dude, A.J. Brown, did you see how A.J. Brown, like, did in, like, the second half of the season? Yeah, he did, uh, he did, you know, A.J. Brown's a beast. Sort of, our guy reminds me of a younger Julio Jones. He was, like, fourth in receiving yards. Actually had put up touchdowns. He got over double digits. Um, Not a lot of receptions. He was not in the top ten in receptions. Um, But he was in the top ten of targets. But oh, targets, yeah, yeah, his yards per reception. Like when that guy caught the ball, he got it was seventeen yards. Like every time, it was number he was number three in yards per uh, per reception, and he's on a high power offense, right? 
he's on a high power offense and he's a big beast number one wide receiver for Jalen Hurts. He is, dude. That dude. I do that dude's crazy, man. He scares me. He's a uh, Batman, right? Don't they call him Batman? Do they really? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> um Batman. Well, are you would you rather have Tyreek Hill or AJ Brown? Uh and that's that's hard to say because at least AJ Brown is getting the touchdowns. Um, like Jalen Waddle had more touchdowns than Tyreek Hill. I don't know. I guess we'll have to. So that's kind of a close one for you, right? That is a close one. So I th- I'm thinking like Tyreek right now because of a uh, you know quarterback situation and everything else. I'm thinking Tyreek and AJ Brown are in the same tier. Yeah, you, you'd clearly have Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup over both those two. Yes. And then we and we really like. I mean, I should have. Uh, this is all on video. I was like, I brought a pen because I was going to actually mark it down the tiers. This. Oh, it's right here. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> Donated blood. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Justin Jefferson is in one, and then we got those two in one. So then Devonte Adams, I'm putting in this tier too, Jason. Um, would you rather have Devonte Adams or AJ Brown or Tyree Kill? I'd rather have AJ. Uh, I think it would go. That's pretty tough. I think Devonte Adams would be at the bottom end of that tier. Okay, that's what I have too. But I think there's still another person in this tier. But I'll tell you here in a second. Oh, I think I know who it is. Okay, so but you you owned him. I know. Uh, Seth on Diggs. So would you rather have Devontae Diggs or or Devontae Adams? Diggs. Okay, so you've got Diggs. See, I was wondering this too because I was like, man, I, I I was loving Diggs. I was like, I would take Diggs over Adams all day. And then like I looked at the stats and I was like, oh, I did. I, I always forget that Devontae Adams had so many like seventeen target like two touchdown games. Well, he led the wide receivers with 14 touchdowns. Yeah. Um, Would you rather have Stephon Diggs or A.J. Brown, Jason? So, Stephon Diggs, right? I had him this year. He was probably one of my most consistent high-power players on my team. But I did notice, like, people were starting to figure out the bills or it was that PCL injury for Allen because – Diggs uh, started, and that kind of concerns me. You know why? Because, yeah, he got me to the playoffs, but he wasn't there when I needed him the most. And you know who was there for other players? It was A.J. Brown and uh, Devontae Adams. So, it's not how you begin. It's how you finish. And think about – think about – I've been – I was ever, ever since um, – I. I've been paying attention to the bills. Man, my nose is getting clogged right now. Maybe I'm getting sick. Um, the bills have had a lot of bad weather games when it matters. Do you like fantasy playoffs? So you have, you might want to take that into account. Like dude, Stefan Diggs was amazing during the regular season, but maybe later on, man, it's, he's in, he might have some really bad games in the snow. Yeah. Um, I think, so, you know, I want to be like, yeah, I had Diggs. He was great for me this year. But I don't think I would really be aiming for Diggs unless I'm in that tier. And uh, Adams. Actually, I would probably get Diggs in front of Adams just because I don't know their quarterback situation right now. Um, I would, Oh, man. So, yeah, I would get Diggs in front of Adams. And would you get Diggs over AJ Brown? I think I, I think it'd be AJ Brown time. AJ Brown. I like AJ Brown, and they play in like don't they play in a dome? Isn't it? It's Philadelphia in a dome? No, they are not. Man, for some reason I thought they did. That's crazy. Okay, you're right. Um, and then so here we go, Jason. This is where I, I don't know if, how this goes. You're a Cowboys fan at least, but CD Lamb over Stefan Diggs or no? No. Okay, so that's the tier break. I think yeah. after Stefan Diggs is a tier. So we have Tyreek Hill, AJ Brown, Devontae Adams, Stefan Diggs. That's a tier. So right now we're breaking this down. There's a lot of tiers here, people, but we're just, this is, you know, this is off season stuff. Uh, 
we're crying over this. There's so many tears. Ah, tears of joy. So, here's the start of our next tier, Jason. I think so. I'm glad that you agree with that. Our tier breaks are we. We it seems like we always agree on our tier breaks at least. Um. So CD Lamb is the top of this tier. And you said that you'd rather have Stefan Diggs over all those. So even Devontae Adams, you'd rather have over CD Lamb, no problem. Yeah. And then, um. Amon Ra St. Brown, I have right after that. Is there a big difference between those two for you? Uh, with the huge drop off that we saw Amon St. Brown have this year and the climb of CD Lamb, is there anybody else I would put in there? See, yeah, here, I'll, let me go down the list because this is kind of where it gets con- confusing for me because. Even though I'm on, I just really like the Lions offense and I like how their defense gives up points, even though their defense was playing well. And I yeah. like how they get to play in a dome with, against the Vikings, against at home games. You know, I just like their division. Um, so he's, and he's, I think he's only entering his ways. This is going to be his third year. But like, uh, so I have him and then DK Metcalf, who I think I should probably have over. That's what I was. Now. That's what I was just looking at was DK Metcalf. Yeah. So, and then we get to some stuff because I've got Debo pretty low just because of, dude, you got to, it's like, what have you done for me lately type of stuff, even though we just went off in that, in that playoff game. Yeah. But so here we go. We have CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ray St. Brown, uh, DK Metcalf, and Amari Cooper. I like CeeDee Lamb much more than, see, I like CeeDee Lamb and DK Metcalf almost the same. And I'm just kind of have Amon Ra up there because, uh, I mean, he didn't get a lot of touchdowns this year, but dude, his targets were insane. So I was just like, and I like, and I like, uh, you know, but he's also going to have to compete with Jameson Williams next year. 146 targets. Dude, it's crazy. So it's, it's, it's it's like, I was just going through like, who's the number one wide receiver? Like who are the wide receivers that get like 10 plus targets a game? Pretty much. CD CD Lamb had 156 targets. Yeah, dude, C.D. Lamb actually had a really good year. So, well, I mean, I'm not saying Brown missed what like three or four games this year. Yeah, he could have had more targets. My my concern with Amon um, St. Brown, Amon Ross St. Brown, is that he was a big guy last year in the final what six games of the season, where he mm. was 100 yards, eight receptions, a touchdown a game. That's why he was uh, his stock was so high this year in the draft because you know wanted to continue that didn't start off that way he had some he had some good games he still had a lot of targets also did not in the way that a lot of managers were hoping where he was going to be putting up those numbers again i do want to say it's a little bit scary for me now just because you know he had the injuries last year but they have uh jameson it looks like a little speedster who's going to be maybe battling for some targets. I think I would have CD Lamb, the DK Metcalf over Amon Ross A. Brown. Um, yeah. So you'd have, okay. You said you, said you had a CD Lamb. Yeah. No kid. Yeah. And so do, and I think the DK Metcalf playoff game kind of played into my decision of like, man, I really want to put DK Metcalf up higher, but. Um, because, you know, I mean, Geno Smith is going to be there next year. And uh, DK Metcalf isn't going to get any smaller or slower anytime soon. So, and then um, that might be a, I think that might be a tear break right there, those three. But we'll see. Because uh, up next, I have like, you got to think that Amari Cooper, like the, like the number one, he, dude, he was so hyper targeted in that offense. But the thing is, is that once uh, what's his name came back, it was all Donovan Peoples Jones. But this is something, uh, dude. Oh no, no, no. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. So like, uh, I feel like Amari Cooper and um, should be so much better next year. Number one wide receiver in the offense, and he's gonna be hyper targeted. So it's like, dude, he had a really what was he like number seven? Didn't he finish number seven in wide receivers points? I'm not sure. I think he did. Is he top ten? Yeah, so I was just like, I was looking at all the top wide receivers. I was like, dude, Amari Cooper's been so consistent since he went to Dallas. But this yeah. is the thing that it's like, uh, it's going to be like a high risk, high reward with uh, Amari Cooper because of um, Deshaun Watson, dude. Like, I hate Deshaun Watson, but I know that he's a really good quarterback. And like, 
he's got to be I, I'd, I'd imagine he's gonna be good by next every like just like you know sean payton everybody believes that he's gonna be good again and if he's good again man like i really like uh the way that amari cooper runs his routes and the way that he uh throws the ball so i don't know dude i think that's just kind of a that's kind of a question mark for me i can see that no, I just, you know it's kind of crazy that the cowboys even got rid of Monty, amari cooper just for how good he is um and then he went to the Browns, and now he's going to have another good quarterback throwing him the ball next year. But now they're going to have a whole training camp and offseason to practice together. I mean, it's set up for Amari Cooper to have uh, a good year next year. He, w- You know, even with a – he was actually in the top 10 for the most 20-plus yard plays this year. He had 18 of them. He was great, man. You know who was number one? 20 plus yard plays? Yeah. Who? Justin Jefferson. I was going to say Justin Jefferson. Damn it. I wish I would have said Justin Jefferson, man. I like 30. I was say because every time I watched him, it was like a deep post that goes 21 yards or something. Well, so I just, it's kind of like I brought that up because I wanted to talk about how, like, oh, we were talking about. Tyra Kill, he just do the drag routes and slants and he gets all his, and then he could just run. Dude, Justin Jefferson was doing that crap too, and he was killing it. He led the league in twenty yard plus, twenty plus yard plays, man. Well, <laughs> the about, too. And the but, thing about Justin Jefferson is like, uh, he can start a route. Like, cause I was listening to the cornerback or wide receiver, I forget who they had it on during the game, and they said that it's very unique. Like, he can get like, um, like they push him to the outside route, you know. So it's like it's like they ride him, and like he, there's no way he's going to be able to come in, like do the like come back inside across the field. Yeah, he, he does it every time. Like, there's no cornerback that can keep him from cutting across, and it's just like the way he runs his routes, or like how long. I don't know what it is, um, but like you just cannot deny him from running his post routes or his slants. It's the diamond teeth. I, uh, uh, so Jason Amari Cooper, that's kind of like, who knows? And then I, I, I had to put the cause. So this is a common stat. I mean, fantasy footballers when I used to watch them, uh. This was like a, a sticky stat, they called it. And it's like one of their main things was second year wide receivers. That's like one of the biggest jumps in fantasy football. So Garrett Wilson, dude, was hyper target. I mean, who knows? We need to see who the quarterback is there. But Garrett Wilson was hyper targeted. And if you watched him, dude, like talk about you can't deny him his routes, man. Like that was crazy stuff. And then I really like Chris Olave. He was dealing with an injury like the second half of the season. But depending on who the quarterback is for the Saints, like if Jameis Winston's in there, dude, oh my God, I would get I would get Chris Olave and be so happy about it. So, I had a, I threw two young second year wide receivers above the next guy who probably should be ranked higher. Uh, but just for upside and um, projections, you know, number and they're both number one wide receivers on their team. Garrett Wilson was seven in targets this year. Actually, he was tied for six with 147. We like Zach Wilson throwing the ball like half the year, dude. Yeah, I really like Garrett Wilson. I really like him. And there was another player. Oh, Chris Olave. Yes. Chris Olave is, uh, he has a chance to be great. He just needs a quarterback that could get him the ball. And if it was Winston that was in there, we would have seen bigger numbers out of Olave. <laughs> Dude, he would have like been like Randy Moss. I'm not even kidding. What's up, yeah. baby? Oh, oh, is somebody wet? So I have to see if, uh, if it's going to be Winston as quarterback or if they're going to go after a quarterback. But it, when they have a- Andy Dalton in there, they just have a completely different game plan and, and Olave is not really a part of it. Well, uh, you know, I mean, Chris Olave was leading the league in air yards by like 300 yards over the first like four games. And that's why I traded for him because it just wasn't connecting. Um, and then if you watch Chris Olave, man, like he was such – he just – he. He would be open all the time. It was all about separation. Like he was open all the time. So I really like Chris Olave going to the second year. And like I said, he was dealing with a injury in his uh ankle or something. I can't remember what it was. I, I didn't even know about it until the very last game. So it, it explains a lot. Weak ankles, man. And then Jason. So I don't know how to, so Amari Cooper, right? I mean, number one wide receiver. We're going on potential there, targeted, targets, targets, targets. And then we've got targets in Chris Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And then here we go. T. Higgins. Like, 
T. Higgins was sometimes the number one wide receiver on that team. Yeah, so we're going back to this is a callback to another Bengals player. What number is this? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. I like T. Higgins, man. I've said in videos in the past that like uh the the Bengals have two number one wide receivers on their team. And they both get production out of Joe Burrow because Joe Burrow can throw the ball and he's going to be fancy factor, like you said, for like the next 10 years. And T. Higgins is, uh, you know, he's got the height, he got the speed, and he can catch the ball. I like yeah, that. And, and there's usually, I think, um, I remember the stat from, again, the fantasy footballers who I have not watched this year because of this. Um, there's usually two teams per year that support a uh, two top 15 wide receivers. You could count. I mean, the Bengals, as long as they've got two, you know, T. Higgins and him, they're going to be they're going to be one of those teams for the next like five years. Yeah. And that's number 14. So you could bet that T. Higgins and Jamar Chase are going to be top 15 wide receivers next year. So draft accordingly. Yeah, I think T. Higgins, I think that's a pretty good spot. And then, Jason. Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley. So tell me this. Who do you have after Calvin Ridley? Keenan Allen, Devontae Smith, Debo. I like that spot. I like that spot. I am- it's like, dude, like, yeah, I love Keenan Allen, but like you already know what you're getting from Keenan Allen. You don't know what Calvin Ridley is going to bring. Yeah. I am no longer a fan of Keenan Allen. I mean, I like Keenan Allen, but fantasy wise, I'm no, no longer supportive of that character. But Calvin Ridley, I, I'll take a gamble on. I know, dude. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet on that guy to be the 15th uh, wide receiver in that offense. This is exactly what that offense needs. Like, I don't believe Christian Kirk is number one potential, but Calvin Ridley is. And well, I bet you we'll, we will see that next year. And Calvin Ridley, I think you could get him a couple rounds you know, late, but you could get probably like round one or two uh, potential. He's probably going to be like on maybe, well, my number one stack that wouldn't hurt your draft was uh, Trevor Lawrence and Evan Ingram. Next year, it might be Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley, dude. Um, yeah. And then the, that means Christian Kirk is going to the other side and then Zay Jones in the slot. And then you have Evan Ingram, dude. Like if they get, they need to go offensive line. Um, if they can do that, Trevor Lawrence, man. We already talked about how he's going to explode wherever he wants. He's going to explode all over the league, man. So, well, let's see uh let's see what happens to Zay Jones. Let's see if he's even on the team next year because they like to have Evan Ingram in that slot too. They like to put Evan Ingram all over the place. That's very that's a good point. Um so Jason, that was a uh, You liked where Kevin Ridley the you liked where Kevin Ridley was. Would you rather have T Higgins or Kevin Ridley? T. Higgins. Would you rather have uh, Calvin Ridley or Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson? I mean, they're still... I I probably would have Calvin Ridley over Olave and... Because of the quarterback? Yeah. So as of January 21st, 2023, Ridley would be over Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. All right, because I, I like that too. When I when I talk it out, and I like when I'm when I'm actually writing down like uh you know Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, I'm like yeah, dude, like that's great. But you know we know what Cal- Calvin Ridley's like dominated the league, um, and we already know what we're getting out of T Higgins. So let's go Amari Cooper, T Higgins, Calvin Ridley, and then Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, and yeah. then um, and then number one wide receiver on his team. And he's healthy is Keenan Allen. So do you like Keenan Allen or would you rather have Devontae Smith? I mean, Devontae Smith was is what going into his third year next year. He's a Heisman trophy winner. And if you watch that fool, he is so dynamic. I am playing Devontae Smith over Keenan Allen every day of my life. So as we we're talking about two teams that can support you know two top 15 wide receivers i think here we go right here your best bet is t higgins and Devonte smith um as the second wide receivers in the top 15 yeah well isn't keenan allen really getting up there too 
like 30 oh, dude, we only have a minute 30 seconds left sorry i was like drinking yeah maybe like a minute or uh is he gonna be like 32 keenan allen yeah and it's like um, but if you watch him he dude in the fantasy playoffs he actually did really well like he probably got some people some championships but you had to deal with so much crap this season so yeah. uh, i mean i think it'd be hard for me to pick up keenan allen just because of how his this last season was with dealing with injuries. Yeah, when he played, he was doing well. But now he's got him another year. Let's just say that he's not going to get another uh, stub toe and take another uh, eight weeks out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's he looks like he's forty five already when he takes us when he takes off his helmet. So yeah. All right. Uh, hey, we're gonna take a quick break. We will be right back. What's up, people? We are back. And better than ever. Except for Jason. He's like worse than ever, maybe. I feel worse than ever. I feel worse than that split second break that we just had. Well, at least you got your helmet on, Jason. So I right, behind, right behind you, oh. your helmet's like over here. <laughs> oh. Oh. And you're wearing and you're wearing fun colors. You look it looks fun, Jason. Look at look at this shirt, man! Look at this shirt, Silverstein. Oh, uh, talk about uh, Calvin Ridley. What about rolling the dice? Ugh. Oh wow, dude! You punch the guy punched him out. That's pretty cool, actually. That's Calvin Ridley punching out his his bookie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we went to uh, the Silverstein show, and me wife he bought it for my birthday. That's She's awesome. Great. Yeah, I love this. I love this shirt. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I like it. Um, all right, Jason. So we ended with we're kind of still maybe on a tier, but um, let's see. We had Amari Cooper. Then we have T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Keenan Allen. Oh no, Devontae Smith, Keenan Allen. Would you rather have Debo or Keenan Allen? Oh, uh, bro hard this one's hard because like dude i would take debo every day but it's like oh my god dude is he gonna play and is he gonna be involved who's a quarterback i mean i guarantee it's gonna be brock purdy next year so yeah i probably would be more involved he probably will well, be more involved. let's see okay this is what the only game and a half that debo and uh <clears throat> purdy has played together is dude i this is so hard for me because like debo is on my like do not buy list because I drafted him in one of my PPR leagues in the second round. He was best available at that time. It was late second round. I was like, dude, this is a steal. I'm going to get this guy. First pick was Jonathan Taylor. Second pick was Debo Samuel. And they both just ruined the league for me. It was like Debo Samuel was just getting hurt at practice. Couldn't even play. And I'm just like, dude, what a waste of a pick. Dude, totally. You know what happens a lot is like when you see these players when they get when they get paid, they don't play like the amount of money they are earning. And he got he got a big check. He got a big check. Uh, the blank check. Go watch that movie. You'll like it. Well, who who's that? Is that the one with Ben Affleck? No, dude, that was like that kid when we were kids. It came out when we were oh, kids. Oh, yeah. And, put like like, a million dollars. and that's when a million dollars meant a lot. Like he bought like a billion dollars worth of stuff with a million dollars. He bought like a roller coaster, didn't he? Oh, no, that was Richie Rich. I was thinking Richie Rich and was a good He even got like a 40 year old woman to like say that she loves him. <laughs> oh, man. Money. Money equals power. That's, I, I don't have any of that. So I don't, I've never experienced any of that. So <laughs> we just go off of our our humor and our charm. Uh, Devo Samuel, he was, looks like, number seven in yards after catch this year with 493. You know who was first in yards after catch? Oh, Tyreek Hill. Justin Jefferson. Was he really? Tyreek Hill was number eight with 482. Man, you would have thought Tyreek Hill would have been the number one. Devontae Smith was the last one in the top ten with 476. And that probably all came in the last, like, four games. Yeah, um, that that one. This is this one's pretty hard for me, Tyler. I I'm not sure. So this is where I would probably I don't. It's 
I, I guess I would probably have to like Different. because the offense set up because of how the Niners are playing and because of Purdy. I I think I would they were both injured a lot this year. I think if I had to pick one injured player, injured prone player or whatnot, it would be uh, Debo Samuel. Over Me too, because I mean. Keenan Allen was his hamstring, and it's been like that for what? This is like second year with his hamstring. Yeah, this is a seven year uh, injury. But lingering. Years. He's a linger, okay. lingering. Ke- Keenan Allen spending seven years in Tibet, and that's with Brad Pitt and his hamstrings. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, like, uh, I just, you know, I'm biased for Keenan Allen because he, like, he got me to a championship and almost won me one. Two years ago or whatever. I can't remember when that was. Um, so, like, I'm still riding that high. So, it's hard for me. To, I'm looking through rose-colored colored glasses at Keenan Allen. So, it's just kind of difficult. Like National Treasure, those uh, Dude, colored spectacles. As soon as I did that rose-colored, I was like, oh, Ben Franklin. Ben, yeah. you, you jokester, Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been best friends. <laughs> Uh, but yeah dude so we have Debo and then I think this next pick so you'd rather have Debo over Keenan Allen that's totally fine but we would rather have Devontae Smith over Debo right yeah Um, Hollywood Brown I think is going to be a steal dude well there is a good chance that DeAndre Hopkins will not be there next year that's what I'm going off of and if that's the case that's a highway robbery it really is, dude. Because like he get when he wasn't there, he'd be averaging like thirteen targets, a hundred yards, and a touchdown, like literally. Yeah. So that, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he was doing pretty good before he got injured too. But he was doing well before the injury and before Hopkins got there. They played college together, you know, at Oklahoma. So uh, they're going to get a new coach in, obviously. But um, I believe that. That you know their connection is gonna like you know survive with the new coaching, and with new coaching I could see them getting rid of D Hop. You know maybe send them to like I don't even know man probably like Green Bay or something for cheap. Uh, right. I was thinking of that, but like um I'm going off a of D Hop not being there, and I think that he is right below you know Devonte Smith, but you can get him late. Like I think you'll be able to get him later than Debo and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I think you'll be able to get him below Keenan Allen, too. I like that. When I was writing this out, dude, I was like, holy crap, dude. Like, Hollywood Brown, like, you didn't realize how well he did without um, without him. And then he got injured with whatever injury. Uh, like but he's still young. He's fast. Yeah, he quietly produced, right? Shh. Don't. So that's going to be a really big pick, value pick for Jason and I next year. Um, You can write that down. But so we that's a good pick, Jason, right? And then, and then we're going off of somebody who I really don't like, but guess what, dude? He produced. So Jerry Judy, Jason. Jerry Judy. That's my guy. Um me and Tyler went in opposite directions this year. We were both the fans of the Broncos because we thought the Broncos were gonna t- <laughs> 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 and I, three strikes you're out tyler javante williams Cortland sutton at least oh you did but you did too too you're right you got russell wilson and jerry judy yeah um the, um what was i going off of that oh yeah we were we were big on the broncos right we thought the broncos were gonna take us all the way i got russell wilson you got javante williams and then at the wide receiver you want a sutton i want a judy and uh, toward, towards the end there, I don't know, Judy was really performing pretty well towards the end of the year. <laughs> I wish I had his stats in the last, like, five or six games. He so, had, like, three out of four. Like, three out of the four yard, last games were, like, 100-yard game. Yeah. I really like Jerry Duty. Judy. Duty. Jerry Duty. I just liked his uh, his speed. He had this one play where uh, it was like two years ago where he just beat like the guy was playing press coverage against him 
and he like just swat he swapped down the guy's hands and went around him. Two seconds after the ball was hiked for two seconds, he already threw up his hand like he was going to like he's open. He's all ah! but it was a trick play because then he stopped, turned around, and the guy kept running past him and he caught it. That's and I was crazy. I know, and I was like, damn. I, I was like, that was such a cool play. I really liked it. So since then I've been a fan of uh, Judy. I like Jared Judy. So Jason, would you rather have Debo or Jerry Judy? Debo. Would you rather have Hollywood Brown or Jerry Judy? Hollywood Brown. Bro, right. I'm not trusting no Broncos, man. Don't don't be putting these thoughts in my head, man. I see would what you'd rather have DJ Moore or Jerry Judy? Jerry Judy. Dude, people are all talking about Jerry. Yeah, DJ Moore is hyper talented and stuff, but even with like, yeah, like he caught some touchdowns, but he it'd be like three for 76 in a touchdown, man. Like dude. Yeah, they need, a, they need a different quarterback in there before I start buying any DJ Moore stock. Yeah, what are we, what are we gonna do here? What um, I think I, I have a little. I think it may, uh, Carolina has like the top ten fin, or uh, draft pick, right? Yeah, well, they've got a lot of they've got like eight in the top, they've got like nine in the top five rounds or something. They're talking because I just heard about how uh, they're trying to say uh, how attractive it is for a new head coach. They got the ninth pick coming up in, in this draft pick, and you know they're going to get quarterback CJ Strud. Uh, I think I think that the any I think the Colts are going to push for CJ Stroud, but I I, I watch uh, Pat McAfee too much. Colts are going to get Will Levis, quarterback, Kentucky. You know it'd be funny. I was thinking about this Pat McAfee's. Ooh, <laughs> that made me not want to eat for the rest of the day. I I'm I'm buzzing. It's like what? It's ten forty four. I'm buzzing. Um. So, so if there is a plan to get a new, and you know he was a, a Heisman finalist, this little CJ character, but as of right now, screw the so quarterbacks from the Panthers. No. So I don't yeah. Know. So Jerry Judy over DJ Moore. Um, yeah. Christian Watson, second year. Are we liking him over DJ Moore? I do like him over CJ Moore. DJ Moore. Do you like him over Jer- or, uh, Jerry Judy? I think I might like him over Jared Judy too. Okay. So this this I I made this list right after I was really upset with Aaron Rodgers. I think I just watched that last game and then I was looking at CJ Watson's like final like three games and he's been doing so bad. But I mean a full off season if Aaron Rodgers shows up to the off season he's not all stoned. Hanging out with me. <laughs> but, hey, if Aaron Rodgers takes it seriously, man, wants to build rapport and everything, like, I would invest heavily in Christian Watson. But until we see something like that, um, and, you know, we like Jordan Love because he's from our hometown, but I don't really believe that he's going to be a success or anything. So, Yeah, man, if Aaron Rodgers just get that energy going to a second-year wide receiver in Christian Watson – you know, so, yeah, stuff, I don't, you yeah, said. yeah, and Words Watson over Dobbs. <laughs> Shut up. Is Watson Watson over Dobbs, right, Jason? Yeah. Which kind of sucks because I like Romeo Dobbs, but Christian, just the his skill set, his his speed is ridiculous. And saw so many plays where it was just like a little drag route and he just like burned everybody. Like a Tyreek Hill in a way. So would That's you rather fast. have Yeah? Would or you like have... a, a Jack a Jaguar. A jaguar on uh, ice with ice skates. You're feeling better, Jason. You're actually you're actually continuing on and saying crazy stuff. <laughs> um, so would you rather have Christian Watson? So you'd rather have him over DJ Moore. You'd rather have him over Jerry Judy, but we'd rather have Hollywood over Christian Watson. Yes, and we'd rather have Debo over Hollywood. I can't remember that. Uh, I think so. Okay, and then Jalen Waddle. How do we feel about Jalen Waddle? I like Jalen Waddle. I tried to trade for him earlier. Um, we need Tua there, man. We need Tua. Tuna needs to come back. So assuming Tua's there, uh, would you have Waddle over DJ Moore? Yes. I'm not, I would I'm not a fan of DJ Moore. I'm I really would too. I just put DJ Moore up there because of how he finished and like he's a number one. He's it's like you're looking for number one wide receivers in an offense. It's kind of hard, yeah. man. Yeah. And he's clearly the number one, like 
clearly, clearly. So, because yeah. I would, I love you know George Pickens and all that, but he's got Deontay Johnson and I, Deontay, all that stuff, dude. It's it needs to be lower on the list. Even, yeah, we even have McLaur- we've got McLaurin still, you know, and and we don't even talk about the Chiefs number one wide receiver, but so we like. Uh, so you're saying that you like Jalen Waddle more than Christian Watson? Yeah, we like him more than Jerry Judy. Yeah, would you like him over Debo or Hollywood? No. So I think I I think I would agree on putting Christian uh, Jalen Waddle over Jerry Judy in um if we know that Tua's back because I, I I just got really discouraged over the last uh, month you know with um the Dolphins so that's that that's that's where this ranking comes from um so we can see that change and then Jason I've got Kadarius Tony next I, and he could be a freaking steal. Yeah, because they're really trying to use this guy in like a Tyree Kill package where he is a very elusive, very agile ability, flexibility. He could, he could, this was the second year, Jason. This was the second year right now. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> number, And he was a first round draft pick for the Giants. Yeah, the, the he, his problem even uh, um his rookie year because I had him his rookie year in one of my leagues that he just kept getting hurt. He just kept getting hurt, hurt, hurt. That's his story right now. So the fact that you have him this uh low, I do like because he's injured prone. Hopefully around what number is this? What number are we at? I think we're almost like at. I think he's maybe twenty three. Okay, so. I think around that area, you're getting around flex wide receiver. He's, but the funny thing is, like, I mean, you know, like we were, I was, I, I, I drafted Gabe Davis to be my, no, I drafted Cortland Sutton to be my, my number two. But like, you know, we were thinking Gabe Davis would be a good number two, Mike Williams would be a good number two. But, you know, Kadarius Tony's got so much upside. I would much rather have, he's like a much better Mike. Uh, Mike Williams, a much better Gabe Davis this year, I think, or next well, year. That's what I'm saying. So, like, if there's a chance, there's other players you would probably get in front of, but if there's a chance you're getting this guy around the flex, absolutely take this guy. Do it. So, do it. Tony, if Tony gets involved the way that, like, his talent is ridiculous, dude. He is a, ty- a taller Tyreek Hill, you uh-huh. know, as far as agility goes. Um, but he just needs to get his stuff together and stay healthy. So Kadarius Tony is going to be a high ceiling play. I still like, I would rather have Hollywood. I think Hollywood's a better value, but dude, if you want to take a gamble on something like Jason shirt, you will, you should gamble on Kadarius Tony, but only do one of those. Don't do that. Every pick like I did this year and just miss on everything. Um, and then Jason Brandon, Ayuk. After that, and it's hard to ignore Brandon Ayuk. So uh even with Brock Purdy, dude, he was he was the guy catching the touchdowns. Yeah. And uh he's the number two option in there. I think I got a little stat for Brandon Ayuk. Oh, he had eight receiving touchdowns this year. That's tied with Justin Jefferson. That's crazy, dude. Jefferson only had eight touchdowns. I know. He had the receiving yards. They just he didn't get the touchdowns. Um. Yeah, so he's he's up there, and he's tied with uh the number one guy in touchdowns. I like I like Brandon Ayuk, Ayuk, Ayuk. He's gonna have some... <laughs> Ayuk. <laughs> Ayuk. <laughs> uh, okay. I, see, I see like a, a mixture of like Dragon Ball Z and Street Fighter. I was trying to think of what he said. No, it's Kamehameha. <laughs> Kamehameha. Um, yeah. How, how's he been doing with Purdy? I know Purdy was once favoring uh, Kittle, but Kittle, and then last game he was like Debo Samuel. Ayuk still gets his dude. If you look at the his stats with Purdy, it's not bad at all. He gets like you know seventy plus yards a game and a touchdown like half the time. So, uh, but 
Yeah, I just feel like I need a wide receiver from the cow or from the they've been scoring over 30 points a game for like a month, you know. So I felt like I needed a wide receiver from the um Niners. Niners and the way he finished was you know, this is ADP is below what he finished right here. So like if he got drafted, you know, 24th, he finished higher than 24th. So um that's what I would just kind of get at, but you know that Debo Samuel is going to be the number 1 wide receiver when he's healthy. Yeah. And then he'll get hurt. And well, be would you high. rather have Ayuk over? You wouldn't rather have Ayuk over Tony or Waddle or Watson, right? No. So I think that Tony might be the end of that. Here. Yeah. And then um. And then here we go. And then the very final, I had to put McLaurin in there, Jason. It's like you have to. You have to. I really like Jahan Dotson, though. You know, like that's who I draft. But I do. If Tyler Hineke's there again, you're going to draft McLaurin. So it's just kind of yeah. like. Because he likes McLaurin. That's the way it is. And if you want like a consistent 10 points a game from your wide receiver, that's not bad at all. Like McLaurin is your number two would be great. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's a safe pick. It's not sexy. It's sexy. Sexy. No sex in the champagne room. No sex in the champagne room. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right jason so oh, i mean this is saturday morning it's 10 53 so I'm, I'm drinking uh and jason so i mean we agreed on our tears uh yeah. no problem and we you know jason had me move up uh I moved up to Calvin Ridley, I think, a little bit for you, and I moved up T. Higgins up a little bit over over the Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we have Christian Watson. You you had me move him up over, I think, Jerry Judy. So yeah. Debo and Hollywood, and then like you know Christian Watson, and then you get into the Jerry Judys and the Jalen Waddles and the Tonys, and, the, and then DJ Moore is probably the very end of that tier. But DJ Moore needs a quarterback before you even put him in that tier. So otherwise, he's in the McLaurin Ayuk tier. Yeah. Okay. Um. So this is all on camera, Jason. We can all look at this later on. You know. The proof is out there. Yeah, and this is—I'm telling you guys, man. Like, hey, your opinion matters. If you want to, you should do this for yourself, because, dude, if you're like me and you just like soak up all this, like you watch everything there is to watch, and you you just overthink everything, it helps to do a list at the end of the year and kind of go off of that because all of the talk, man, just, it just goes off the rails over the off season. So I think that's going to be, I, I, that's what happened to me this uh, off season is I just over, I overthought everything and I literally drafted everybody's like MVP pick and everybody's MVP pick ended up being like, it was a high risk, high reward pick. And I, every single one failed. So my team just failed. So <laughs> I think that you should like do high risk, high reward, maybe every other pick, you know, or whatever, um, but not every pick. <laughs> Lesson learned, right? Hey, I, I did like Derrick Henry, though. People thought I was, you know, crazy for picking Derrick Henry up, you know, top three, but or top four. I can't remember when I had him. Um, but Derrick Henry actually delivered. And he, he'll probably do similar next year, but he's still going down. Uh, anyways, Jason, thank you so much, man, for uh making the time and trying to be healthy enough for this yeah yeah and we've got a bunch of big football games on today i am not changing any of my picks dude because like you said when you see the two-time banner against him i was like screw it dude i'll get my points from him this week and then i'll if they if if i have to change next week i'll just change next week like they're still gonna get me two times the points so yeah and it's worth the roll of the dice if the Bengals actually beat the bills which i doubt uh, because of the damn offensive line, but whatever. Those linemen, those linemen are out. That and again, sucks. a lot of our uh, rankings are going to depend on offensive line issues and, you know, strength building and taking away this off season. So if things change, it's going to be because of offensive line. But anyways, yeah. thank you so much for watching. Uh, sorry, it was delayed, but Hey, we got to look out for our employees. <laughs> I appreciate it. I had to put in PTO. I don't want to get sued by HIPAA. <laughs> How much are you paying this guy? I'd be like, I almost just said, M. I just almost said mother effer. <laughs> yeah. I have to bring the union now. 
<laughs> he's putting his he's he's paying the show to to be on here. I know, I'm paying to be here, but if you're forcing me to be here under when I'm under the weather, I'm gonna get my union lawyer. Ooh, we're gonna take you down, the corporation down. All right, guys. Well, hopefully you can drink and watch the show later and Saturday after the games. Um and again, if you were you're waiting to drink and watch us with us last night, we apologize, but dude, sickness has been nuts this year, so yeah. All right, guys. Thanks again. We will catch you on the flip side.